Hey everyone, I'm just going to wait uh, probably one more minute to make sure we capture everybody who wants to hop in on this and then uh, we can get going. Right, I think we'll get going here. Uh, my name is Nate Wells. I am the, uh, I'll be the administrative liaison uh, for the elementary virtual school. Also on here I see um, we have Jennifer Peterson who is the uh, uh, program administrator. And the purpose of tonight is just to field questions that, that you may have. On the front end of that, I'll say that we don't have all of the answers figured out yet. Um, but we'll we'll get to the we'll get you what we know um, because school's coming up quickly. Um, a little bit about me. Like I said, my name is Nate. I'm currently the principal at the Montessori School. I've got two first graders. They're twins uh, who will also be a part of the virtual school. So um, hopefully, I can I can learn with all of you and and we can uh, move move forward together. So. How this is gonna work is that um, ideally we'll use the chat box. And so if you haven't done this before, um, if you go down to the bottom of your screen, there's a chat box. And if you have a question, um, you can go ahead and put your question in there. And then we'll just answer them as they come up. I may reach out, I also see there's a couple of virtual school teachers online. So um, if I don't know the answer, I'll see if there are others that, that do. Um, Jennifer, anything that you want to say before we start taking some questions? Oh. Okay, Jennifer, try it now. Sorry. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Some of you might have been on in other um, informational meetings or heard a lot of information. I'm sure you've also received plenty of emails from myself, Mr. Wells and the teachers. Um, we're very happy to have you a part of our virtual e-school this year. And um, thank you all again for coming this evening. We look forward to trying to answer as many questions as possible. So welcome. 
All right. So, and just, you know, in the spirit of the virtual school, I'm actually doing this virtually from my home. So, um, which will be an experience we'll all be dealing with. So if you hear some children in the background, hopefully they're screaming with joy um, about the dinner they're having, those sorts of things. So a uh, first question that came up is what will the 4K schedule look like? So uh, on the communication that was put out with the schedules, we didn't create a 4K schedule. The 4K schedule, if you are, if you are in virtual 4K and you're enrolled into, in, into the district's 4K option, um, you'll have Abby uh, Ackerman as, as the teacher. The 4K, 4K schedule will look um, similar to the kindergarten schedule in terms of when the meetings are. Um, and she'll be putting that out eventually. The one piece, so for K2, we're using uh, Edgenuity as a software. There isn't a 4K curriculum, so uh, Abby will be using creative curriculum as her foundation and delivering lessons from there. Uh, for the creative curriculum is what the other 4K sites in the district use. I don't know how much Abby's dug into it yet. Abby, uh, do you have anything like to add to the, to the 4K? Um, yes, hi. I have been looking and studying over the creative curriculum and it actually is, um, to me, it's a lot like, there's a lot of similarities with Montessori, which I like about it. There's some hands-on things that I can provide and ideas for you to do at home. Um, as Nate said, I am still looking it over and I'm actually meeting with another 4K teacher tonight after this meeting to go over a few more things and to get more information myself, but um, I feel really good about it and I'm excited, excited about it. Thanks, Abby. If you aren't able to use the chat box and would like to just unmute yourself and ask a question, we can do that too. Um, let's see, the next question is, will we need to use personal computers or will they be able to utilize Chromebooks from the school? Also, will they be doing Zoom classes to see people or are they going to be 100% at home with occasional meet and greets? So uh, we will provide Chromebooks. The information went out about orientation. Uh, so the orientation for the elementary is gonna be on September 1st. And it's from, t I think 12 to six, right, Jennifer? Uh, yes, 12 to 6 p.m. And then for those who, um, Want just curbside pickup at the end, we have um, blocks from like six to seven. So at that point you can pick up the Chromebooks. Uh, the, the actual delivery of the content will be a, a mix of Zooms and the students interacting on the, um, on the platform on Ingenuity or Odysseyware. And then there'll be some paper pencil hands-on uh, parts to the curriculum too. And let me say this too. So we we are um, the the, K, the the virtual school in itself was created, started being created. I think back in March, uh, April, as we were planning for the pandemic. Um, so we're still creating this piece. So one thing, some things that we are, some things that we do know, some guiding principles are we, we value connections. Um, we want to create opportunities for students to interact with other students and their teacher online frequently throughout the week. Um, there are things that, that we haven't talked about as, as a virtual school and if there's ways to create more, more connectivity beyond the classroom led pieces. So um, as we're going forward, our one, one thing we're committed to is listening to your feedback and using feedback from the students, from the teachers, from the parents to make this experience um, as, as good as possible. We want our virtual school to be as good as our face-to-face. -face. And so um, if you have feedback about things or ideas, I'm open the email your teachers are, you can call me, talk to Jennifer, those sorts of things. Next question is, uh, I've received three uh, emails Three of my four children's teachers. Have some teachers not reached out yet? Um, I'm, Jennifer? I'm working on that one for Alicia too. Okay. We understand that textbook, textbooks won't be available, but curious if the scope and sequence of the virtual program for kindergarten will be similar to that of the classroom. So at some point we transition to in-person learning, the transition will be easier for staff and students. 
So there's two pieces uh, for the transition back to the face-to-face -face schools. One part is the academic piece. So the, the Edgenuity and Odyssey Wear is, is aligned to um, Common Core State Standards, which are the standards that follow, uh, that we follow in the, in the face-to-face brick and mortar schools. Uh, so hopefully it won't be a seamless transition, but hopefully it, that they're covering the, the, the same, um, same topics and content. The other piece of the transition for students to make it easier is we want them to be connected to their, uh, to their home schools. And so that's why we created the homeschool-based classrooms so that it'll be easier for students to connect with uh, teachers at school, to connect with their principals, to connect with their counselors, uh, those sorts of things. Next question is when we pick up our child's Chromebook and drop off paperwork, will we get our child's login details for Odysseyware, software, et cetera? I'm gonna tag Jennifer on that one. Oh, hold on one second. I was looking at a different question, Nate, I'm sorry. That's okay. Login details for the yep. kiddos, yeah. We we talked with the teachers today and so um we are debating between two different things either we are in the process of sharing the google folder with all of the information our odyssey Wear information right now in hard copy has links on it which don't show up on the paper that we're sending out so we're working on updating our website on the virtual e-school site so parents would have that access so either we're going to redo it and make sure that by um either tomorrow evening for secondary and elementary next Tuesday, have it in their folders that they will pick up at orientation, or we're um, directing you to the website where everything is click, link, here it goes. Um, let's see here. Uh, question about orientation day. The time slots are full. How can we get a time to come? Will it be inside or outside? So orientation day, uh, we are looking at the weather and it looks like we're gonna have nice weather. So. Uh, we are going to have it outside. Um, we still want to follow uh, physical distancing, safety, safety precautions, mitigations, those sorts of things. Um, but if you if you show up at a time that you're not signed up for, obviously we want you to sign up. But if for some reason you need to come at a different time, we can we can be flexible with that. Yeah. And you can email Tara and myself, and we will get you on the. Um the RSVP list so that we know approximately what time you do want to come. And to the question, if you have multiple, if you have multiple children, do you need to sign up for one slot or two slots or three slots? Jennifer, what's your thought on that? We've had families do it both and we will accommodate you if you sign up for all four or if you want to just sign up for one slot. Um, I also want to comment on kind of the, before Jennifer was talking about the login details. So um, what, the, what the teachers, what, we, what we've talked about is the first four weeks being a slow roll into, um, into the, to the Edgenuity and Odyssey Wear in our face-to-face -face schools. We spend a lot of time creating relationships, doing activities, those sorts of things. And so as we're starting this journey together, a couple of things are happening. Teachers uh, are still learning about the Ingenuity platform and how it works. We're still working out details about how do parents um, submit work, what work to submit. So we're working to figure all those things out, but doing it together with the students and families. So we do want to get uh, information out in terms of the, the software, Odyssey Wear and Ingenuity, but also know that the first, at least the first week, it's, we're not going to be engaging with that um, with that specific software. And truthfully, parents do not need to expect to have online access and be working from day one on those programs. Um, we're going to, like Nate said, transition very nicely so that we're supporting and ensuring connectivity. We're building relationships. Um, and then we will start building into the program. And those will be those routines and procedures which happen in the brick and mortar school, as well as in our virtual e-school, so that it's a seamless transition. If we find the virtual school isn't working for our children, can we transfer them back face-to-face -face before the trimester, or is that a firm time frame? 
So like, like all things, um, there's always ex extenuating circumstances. Um, if it's not working, then we, we need to have a conversation about it and work through interventions to, to try to make it work. Um, the problem with moving in and out between, between the, the trimesters is it's attached to our staffing and how we do it. So many of our teachers have been transferred from the, from the brick and mortar schools to the virtual school. And so we need to be cognizant of, um, of what it means to move mid trimester and the fewer transitions that the children have, that's better. So it's, it's, a, it's a firm time frame, but there's always extenuating circumstances. And like always, we would, we would work within, with that, that framework. With orientation being on Tuesday, Will the first day of school be Wednesday? So, uh, yes, yeah, starting on Wednesday is when you can expect to. Um, so, on, on the schedules, the teachers have morning meetings on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So, you can start to expect to have your child uh, logged on at the morning meeting time to start off with during that first week. And correct me if I'm wrong, Jennifer, but teachers will be uh, working with, with small groups. And so on the schedule, sample schedules that, was sh that were shared, those small group times are there and, and you can expect for your child to attend those. In addition, you'll be starting to look to connect with um, families to schedule individual conferencing times uh, during the week and those sorts of things. There, the students will not be logging on to Ingenuity on, on Wednesday or Odyssey where. And we anticipate that transition where we can do that together as a group and we can help even in some of our one on one conferences to support everybody and make sure that it's seamless as possible. <clears throat> workbooks is a good topic. Oh, workbooks. Yeah, I skipped over that one. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we have access to um, curriculum materials to supplement the online instruction, both in PDF form that we can share with families as well as workbooks. Um, workbooks were ordered um, immediately when we looked at um, closing registration and knowing what our numbers are. Um, they are still being um, shipped to us. So if they happen to come before Tuesday, we will pass them out to families. If not, the teachers will be working with the PDF um, worksheets and providing them to families um, in the interim until we have physical workbooks. And coincidentally, um, we got a call from a couple other districts today, our district administrator, um, asking us if we were having problems securing workbooks just like they were. So unfortunately, this is not just a River Falls specific issue, but um, I was provided with all of the PDF um, copies so that is uh, a good thing to have in the background and in, in the interim if we get into it and your family has a hard time printing um printing things off if you just contact um contact myself and we'll be able to to help support you has a paraprofessional been hired to work with miss markel so um in general we have class size guidelines in the district and we're we're trying to have those class size guidelines in the virtual world so when class sizes get too big we're looking to support teachers with uh, paraprofessionals and there has been a paraprofessional uh, assigned to support miss markel who has a larger class size Do the kids need to use school email addresses at all? Good question. <laughs> I don't have an answer, Jen Jennifer. There will be email addresses that are tied to um, the online curriculum platforms, but otherwise um, messages will be able to be sent in those platforms back and forth to the teachers. So, and the same for parents as well. Any emails that we would use though would be school emails, just to confirm. Any questions about um, 
the schedules that were put out there, do those make sense? Do, you know, as it was it clear in terms of where, where flexibility is? Um, questions on what the first handful of weeks are gonna look like. There is a good question about if students get behind or are struggling, um, will they have access to an interventionist? So um, it would base, be based on whether or not um, that student would um, potentially qualify to be in um, certain programs where they would need to be assigned to an interventionist or a small group. The one nice thing about our program is that the teachers will be meeting with their students in whole group um, lessons and um, meetings as well as small group grade level as well as one-to-one. -one. So it might be that some of that um, intervention conversation and work occurs in those one-on-one -on -one meetings. Our program is also going to have academic tutors available in the evening both at the elementary and secondary level. So um, with that being said those schedules will be rolled out um, probably by the third week of September, we anticipate, um, where families um, 4K12 could um, sign up to get some supports from our academic tutors. Next question, how rigid is the curriculum on edgenuity if a child is working in a specific subject math that was above their grade level last year? Will that be an option this year or is this a teacher specific question? Oh, it's a good question. So what we had talked about, uh, so how edgenuity works is that there are, there are different modules. Each module has five lessons for the five days in the week. And what we can do on the administrative end is we can, we can dictate uh, when we open those modules to people. So we've, what we've talked about um, with teachers and at the administrative level is that for the first four weeks, we want to um, have everybody doing the same lessons. So, so all first graders will be on module 1.1 and then work through those for the first few weeks. Um, and the reason for that is so that uh, we can figure out all of the technical stuff that goes with it. So we can problem shoot any um, connectivity things or um, anything that goes with the software. Once we feel that uh, students and teachers and families are comfortable on the platform, then we can adjust it to make it more uh, in, in, in individualized. Questions, uh, we, will we be supplied with our children's email addresses and password information um, specific to 4K? Um, Jennifer, it sounds like that for, for Edgenuity um, and Odyssey where there's, there's gonna be their own username, passwords, e emails. Yeah, but we wouldn't have anything at 4K level to my yeah. knowledge. Yeah, so that's something that we got to figure out. And typically at that level, we would go with parent communications between the teacher and the parent for that assignment um, versus actually an email address. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. As the 4K teacher, I was just going to add that I'll be doing different Zoom um meetings with the 4k and it might be individual or small group but um the parent will most likely be doing the logging in at that level question about uh can they do zooms on the chromebooks yes mm -hmm. um chromebooks do you can do zoom on them um and features are different depending on on if it's an iphone on a laptop a desktop or a chromebook but whatever the kid, the, the students would need, Chromebook will, will meet those needs. So you can have your phone back. Yeah. And the teachers will be working with parents, um, both in Edgenuity at the K2 level and Odysseyware at 312 to create those um, learning coach opportunities and the parent portal um, so that parents um, can follow and monitor student work and communicate with the teacher on a regular basis. That will be part of the, um, the orientation and the onboarding to make sure everybody feels comfortable as they're getting familiar with the program. A question about uh, learning coach accounts in Odysseyware. Um, maybe one of the, the teachers who have kind of been in there and looked around at it, or maybe you know Jennifer, if there's a separate learning coach account 
than the student account or if they're the same. Edgenuity will be different than Odyssey Wear, but yes, um, we will have that information for parents. And besides just kind of the teachers helping parents um, transition and log in there, we will also put that, hi, Miss Maida. We will also put that on our website too, so parents can have easy access to all of those materials as well. Um, let's see. I have a first grader and kind kindergartner. They have their morning meetings at the same time. Will it be something I'm able to get them started with and then they can watch? Uh, so that is, I'll finish the question, I guess. Um, and then they can watch, participate on their own. The answer to that is yes. So um, with the with the K five with the K two groupings and then the three five, the idea was that if um, you just need to get them on, and then they can take it from there. So I've got two two first graders. Um, our thought is that my wife, who will be working from home, is blocking time off. She'll be able to get the kiddos signed on on the same computer and participate. And then when it's done, then they can transition away from it. What, can, I, can I ask what, what is, um, what's weighing most on people's minds right now in terms of the, the, the school you're starting up? Or have we done such a sweet job that people are feeling just really good about things starting? If that's, that's it, that's okay too. I think Nate made a really good point earlier to say, you know, this is new for everybody and we want to be there to support each and every one of you. So at any point of time, if you have ideas, suggestions, recommendations, feel free to shoot myself and Nate an email. Um, it may work, it may not work, but we certainly want to be open to continuing to make this good and better so that we are supporting all of your needs. So there's a comment on um, missing out on social interactions with peers. Um, I think that that is something that we, as, as we're developing the program, making sure that students aren't being isolated from, um, from each other. So we currently don't have anything in the plan that, that talk about student connection outside of those times you've already provided. But I do think it's worth us having more conversation about. A question about parent involvement will be needed, required for a parent who is also working from home. Um, that's a, I think that's a good question. That's what my wife and I are talking through. And so the short answer is we don't, well, it depends on the age of your child and then we're not really sure. I mean, the younger the child, the more support they'll need to get logged on to do the work. Um, you know, how well will a child be able to engage in edgenuity software for extended periods period of time? That's a question. You know, there's information out there about um, children and screen time and, you know, those sorts of things. And so the short answer is, I guess, I, I don't know. I do know that um, in the River Falls School District, we have a set of beliefs and priorities and values, and that those priorities, beliefs, and values uh, that we find in our in our brick and mortar schools should transition over to our virtual school, and that's the part that we work and develop together. So, um, and that's why I'm around and Jennifer's around. Where if if you're in a certain situation and and you need support, that's where you reach out to us and, and we work through it. And if we find a lot of people struggling with the same pieces, then that tells us something that how we may need to, to adjust our, our programming. You know, concerns about how my child will work with me through her assignments. That's, you know, that, that's a great question. I mean, I think maybe we might need to set up a support system for, <laughs> for parents on this too. Um, 
I'm not even I'm not even joking that you know at the, at school our teachers have will have the luxury of having a certain identity and how the how the kids perceive them. Um, at home, when the when the parent then becomes the teacher, you know, kids our kids know us. They know our buttons. They know what we follow through on and what we don't. So that's a that's a shared concern at least on my end. How much time the kids are going to be facing screens uh, in isolation? So, kind of spoke to that before. Is that that's something that that we need to keep our finger on because we we want to deliver um, like academically rich experience, but we also want students to be physically and social emotionally healthy. Will there be Zoom calls with more students? Most of these kids are going to forget what it's like to interact with youngsters. Yeah, I think that. That um, you know, that's a. I appreciate these comments because that's kind of bringing up common themes. So that is something that that we should talk more about as a, as a virtual program. How we're connecting kids with kids outside of class time. Sorry, I'm just going through and reading some questions. Um, missing the connection with the school community. How can we connect the hybrid with virtual kiddos periodically? Um, Jennifer, I, the other elementary principals, counselors, and school psychs actually had a, had a meeting about that today. Uh, we're still fleshing out the details, so I don't want to to talk too much about it in case they change. But um, we are thinking about connect. You know, how how do the how do the virtual kiddos connect with you know their their school administrators, their counselors, um, potentially classrooms. Students hopefully will be transitioning back for sure at the latest next year. Some students might be transitioning back at a, a trimester depending on a family situation. So uh, we, are, we are thinking a lot about that and how to keep them connected. Another comment about parent support for parents. And I will say um, that maybe Jennifer, the teachers know more about this, but on the front end, we'll be sharing out, um, you know, Edgenuity and Odyssey have videos and parent. So like there's, there'll be information coming out in that sense. Um, I don't know how much parent education there is in terms of, you know, how do you, how do you work with your child? Maybe that exists in there. Um, so I, I just want to mention that in terms of Odyssey, we're in Edgenuity, there, there is, stuff out there for parents to look at and, and to learn about those two programs. Uh, the question I have about whether or not working with your child, you know, behavioral things, I don't know if those exist. If those don't exist, then that's something that we can definitely um, provide support on. I like the comment about um, ongoing support for parents learning how to navigate everything. Um, I think we'll do our best to kind of put our heads together and see if we can't come up with some good options and ideas as well. So um, that's a really great, <coughs> a really great point. Um, question about parents emails and parents connecting outside. So one thing we haven't talked, but I know that one thing we do um, at our school is that we have a, a parent directory, which is optional. And um, we share that out with our parent group. And if they're interested in their information being out there, they can share their, their email address or phone number. So that's something that we can maybe talk about too in terms of creating a, a virtual school parent directory so people can, can connect. It would be optional, so you wouldn't have to share your information. Um, but that's a, that's a thought on that. Um, there was a point about um, creating a page where parents can connect. Um, we are looking into several things. I'm working with um, a couple different of our tech coaches and our technology integration specialist. Um, Google keeps changing some platforms for us and we recognize that not everybody has a Google account, but we were looking at either um, different, a Google site, um, Google, um, it used to be Google Plus, um, They've changed and updated that now too. 
Um, anything that we do do though, even on our website, we're looking at having like a private portal for just virtual eSchool parents as well, so that you would have a place to go for certain resources, but we're still kind of trying to work through the details on that so that it can be good and contain the correct amount of information needed. So, um, oh, one thing that we are working on, I saw that there's a comment in there about virtual snacks or lunches with peers. Um, you know, just kind of those study groups or different ways to connect, I think those are great ideas. Um, whether it's directly from the teacher or some of that is, you know, an extension to family connections. Um, there will be a lunch um, option available through the school district. I know many families um, liked having meals delivered through distance learning because it was something that they didn't have to worry about um, when they were in school, whether they picked them up at the middle school or high school or whether they had them delivered. Um, even with our hybrid in the district, we are creating an option now that will be available very shortly. We were hoping to have it ready for tomorrow, but I don't think food service is quite ready with it yet. Um, so that families can order lunches. Um, virtual school families will be able to order lunches five days a week if you want. And there will be a pickup process for you to um, get those lunches for your children. Whether you um, pay for the lunches, whether you are on a free or reduced meal plan, they will be available. Um, it will be a pickup at um, Meyer Middle School. Um, there will be kind of like a um, contactless pickup option for families back there. Um, but you could order specific meals, breakfast and lunch for five days a week. Um, the pickups are going to be on Tuesday and Friday is what I was told by our food service director. And if we can get that information ready, it will be in the packets for you. Otherwise, we'll send it out um, electronically, if not prior to that. So um, for some of you, it's just a great convenience to have those meals ready to go, especially if you're working at home. You don't have to stop and create lunch. Um, it's really a family-friendly option if that is what works the best for you. So stay tuned for some more information to come on that. All right, if the questions are slowing down, that's okay. Um, this won't be the last time we'll have conversations. Uh, Jennifer and I, you know, as I mentioned before, we're interested in getting stakeholder feedback. And so um, once things get rolling, the, the little bumps and barriers are gonna become more apparent and um, anything that you all can do to help us navigate those, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, if you do have any other questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Jennifer uh, or your classroom teacher and we'll do our best to answer them quickly. And uh, I, I think my my plan as the the uh, elementary liaison is to um, send out updates as much as I think there's there's stuff to update on. So, which nowadays probably will be frequent. So, um, so yeah, let's leave the door open. Let's talk about uh, the experiences we're having and um, make sure we make something great together. All right, have a good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody.